happy Sabbath. I am happy to be here. Um, for those who don't know, I just came back from working at the summer camp in Camp Y&I. And, oh, it's playing. And um, I've come back with a new appreciation for parents, for teachers, for aunties and uncles to take care of kids longer than a week. I, so <laughs> what, what I did there is I wasn't a counselor. I was just for the, the media person, but I was around kids long, like enough, enough for me. And um, it was, uh, it was a journey. Um, to, no, seeing that, that age that we had, we had ages six to 17 and taking care of those kids is very different each week. Um, they're very different age groups, different energy levels, and um, I felt it. <laughs> Um, but the fun thing about camp is seeing these kids choose Jesus. One of the things that I like to do is someone asked me this summer what I enjoy about camp and what I enjoy about my job. What I love doing is I, I like taking pictures and videos and capturing things. But what I don't like is I don't really like learning new cameras. I don't really like editing. I don't really like um, fixing photos up. But what I do like is capturing things that people can remember. So this summer, I had that opportunity to do that with the, the campers and with the staff. But within that time, um, <laughs> I want to tell you a story about what, what happened. So there is a, <laughs> a camper m during my adventure week, which is a six to nine year olds, um, who made me feel a lot like what we're talking about today. We're talking about uh, Jesus being a shepherd. And during our adventure week, we have the campers go get ready for a bed, ready for showers um, during the evening so they can get ready for the next day or just kind of cool down and calm down that night. So I'm working with the campers. Um, I'm in front of the, the, the bathrooms, making sure they all have their things, making sure they have their toothbrush, their toothpaste, their towel, their clothes, all of their clothes that they're going to change into, their soap, everything. So th as they're walking in, I'm, I'm seeing that they have all these things coming in the showers. So I wait for them. I start yelling, all right, boys, we have two more minutes. You should be wrapping up now. Come outside. A certain camper comes back outside, and he has less than what he went in with. He actually has nothing in his hands, nothing in his hands at all. He walked in with a towel, with clothes, with soap, shampoo, with a toothbrush, toothpaste, comes out. He, he looks showered, so he's clean, but nothing else in his hands. So I asked him, like, hey, buddy, where's your clothes? Like, where's, where'd everything go? And he's like, uh-huh. And I was like, well, maybe we should get it before we go back to the cabin. So he goes back inside, and he grabs clothes. And he comes back outside. He's like, I think this is mine. I was like, no, you have to be sure that's yours because that's someone else's that they lost. So that, that happened multiple times. Another instance is a camper knew that he lost things and just told me that he lost things. So we were talking about, I forgot what we were talking about for worship, but something about the, uh, the lost coin parable. And my camper yelled out, oh, that's me. I'm like, oh, what do you mean? Like, are you the lost coin? I was like, yes, this kid finally got it, that Jesus is looking for us. He's the lost coin. He's like, no, I just forget everything everywhere. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, okay. He's like, yeah. And then I find it eventually. And he was the one camper that kept forgetting everything everywhere. Like, we had to yell, like, hey, before we leave, we know this is yours. Like, this belongs to you. Come, come grab it. So things like that happened the entire uh, time, even for teenagers. Uh, the lost and found pile grew bigger and bigger. Um, but it was fun. But that kind of ties into what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about John chapter 10. In our, am, our I Am series today, we're talking about Jesus saying, I am the door. So just like I had to be patient, um, Jesus is patient with us. Jesus loves us, and he accepts even our mistakes with whatever we do. Even if we forget things, he's saying, it's okay. We'll do it again. We'll try it again. Before we start, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for this day. Lord, I ask that as we're here in your presence, Lord, in this rest, that we put everything that's bothering us, Lord, on the cross. Lord, our anxieties, our stresses, Lord, things from work, things from our family, things from our friends, I ask that we can put this all on the cross today, Lord, and rest in you. Lord, fill this place with your Holy Spirit. And in Jesus' name I pray, Lord. 
Amen. Okay, so we're going to be starting in John chapter 10. If you guys have your Bibles, you can get there. If not, we might have the verse on the screen. John chapter 10, verse 1. John 10, verse 1. It says, Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate listens to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. So it says here that the person who enters in is the shepherd. The person who enters in the very beginning is the shepherd. The sheep know that. And what they also know is his voice. So this summer, I had the privilege of, after the campers went to bed, we had the camper worship, and they would go to bed, and then we had staff worship. And in this staff worship, we had this pastor called Pastor Ben, who's in Maui right now, but he's a good friend. And the whole thing that he was going over this, this summer, the theme, was accepting what Jesus has done for us. I feel like constantly we're told the things that he's done. We say it to others, we read it, but accepting it itself is the hardest part. And in this story of the sheep and the shepherd, being in the pen is what matters. We can see it, we can picture it, we can be around it, but being in it is when it's beneficial to us. Because only when we're inside does the shepherd count us as his. If we're outside, it's someone else's. He still wants us to come inside, but if we're not inside, we don't get fed. If we're not inside, he doesn't count us as coming inside. If we're not inside, he won't feed us. We have to be inside. Now, we're not, we can't just be the sheep right by the pen saying, all right, come inside, come inside, and we stay out there. We also have to take a step inside. And that's what, we, what I uh, was blessed with this summer is knowing my worth in Jesus. This, this idea, I don't know why I couldn't grasp it until this summer, but Jesus paid a price for us, right? He paid a price, and that price was his life. So because of that, no matter what anyone else says, that price is what he paid. You go to a store, you buy something, you wear it. Someone says, that's ugly. You don't care because you paid a price for it. What, you, what you're wearing is what you paid for it, right? No matter what anyone else says, that shirt must have been $5. No, it wasn't. I paid this much. And that's what it's worth. Jesus paid his life. And that's our worth. That's your worth. Accepting that and knowing it and claiming it is what you have to do now. No matter what anyone else says, you're not worth it. I don't care. Jesus paid the price. That's what I'm worth. You don't belong here. Jesus paid the price. You shouldn't be doing these things. Jesus paid the price. He's... He purchased me at his life, and that's what I'm worth. So while we're in this pen, that's what Jesus is doing. He paid the price so that we can enter into this pen, into this sheep, into this herd. So our first point today is to know his voice. Now, sheep aren't the smartest animals in the animal kingdom. They're actually pretty unsmart. Um, we talked about this a, a, couple, a while ago in another series, but certain sheep, uh, when they're with their, their other friends and they're drinking water from a river, sometimes a sheep will kind of just hop in and get rushed away by the river. The other sheep behind him will continue doing that until the shepherd picks them up and brings them out. So if one sheep is going into the water, gets rushed away. The other sheep comes by, watches him go, and also gets in the water and gets rushed away. They're not smart at all. So at first when I was reading this, this parable, the story of Jesus talking about the sheep, I was like, wow, this is powerful. Jesus is there for us. He's guiding us. I was like, wait a minute. Is he calling us sheep? Like, I, I don't really like that. But after this four weeks at camp, I understand now what it feels like. Jesus is constantly watching us having these little mistakes, going back and forth, forgetting things, arguing, talking back. And he just wants us to be safe. He just wants us to be in this, in this pen, to be safe. 
That's all he won. So in a, in a way, I came to understanding after service that indeed I am a sheep. And that's okay. Because as long as I know who my shepherd is, I'll be safe. I want you to read again verse 3 and 4. It says, The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads the mount. We'll stop there real quick. I don't know about you, but shepherds still exist today. And they don't just have 10 sheep. They have about 100 or more. So knowing each one by name is crazy to me. Now, at one point in my life, in my scholastic journey, I wanted to be a teacher. Knowing names of students stopped me from being one of them. That's one reason. The other reason was lesson planning. I can't lesson plan. Um, and three was just how to corral that many kids. I, I don't have the energy for that. But Jesus knows each and every one of these sheep by name. He knows you by name. Why? Because he paid the price for you. That's why he knows your name. There's no list he's reading off, making sure you're present. He knows you personally by name, and he wants you in the pen. Verse 4, it says, When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. When we get to know anyone or anything, we kind of uh, recognize sounds, voices, things, certain ringtones in our phones. I know for a while, <laughs> I won't say who it was, but I would get this text, and I put a certain ringtone to it because I didn't want to talk to that person. So when I heard it go like, ding, my, like, my heart rate went up, and I was like, oh, no, I have to reply. And then every time it would, go, it would go off, my heart would just race again and again and again. Not in a good way, it was in a bad way. I didn't want to talk to that person at all. But there's certain things that we do, and the reason why we understand them and we recognize them and remember them is because we spend time doing it. We spend time with that person, with that thing, whatever it is, and we recognize it and we know that voice. In the same way with Jesus, the only way to recognize his voice is to spend time with him. Now, the amazing thing is that Jesus is a personal God. Now, for a while, I struggled with this. I struggled comparing myself to others, saying, there's no way that Jesus is talking to me because I can't hear him. I kept hearing people say, yeah, Jesus whispered to me. I have really bad hearing. I don't hear anything. I can barely hear my parents. How am I going to hear Jesus? How is this going to work? And then people said, oh, Jesus spoke to me through someone else. And I was like, wow, okay, maybe I can do that. But then I was a very shy kid, so I wouldn't talk to anyone else. And I'm like, Lord, who's going to speak to me? For you, it may be different. It may be music. It may be a person. It may be an experience. It may even be that whisper. But a way to know that is to spend time with him and to ask him to speak to you. A lot of times I would get angry and say, Lord, why aren't you speaking to me? And I realized I never asked. I was just waiting, sitting in silence. He wants to speak with us. He wants to talk to us. But it's asking him, and then we will recognize that voice. So our first point is to know his voice. How you know a good shepherd is to look at the sheep. Are the sheep still following him? Are they wandering? Are they listening? Or are the sheep following him so well that they go find other sheep to bring to this shepherd because this one's so good, he wants to share everyone else? Are you doing the same thing? Are you sharing what your shepherd has done for you? Let's jump down to verse 7. John 10, verse 7. It says, Therefore Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate. For the sheep, all who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. Your version might say, I am the gate or I am the door. But Jesus is saying is, I am the gate. What I want you to do is to close your eyes with me and picture something. Let's say for this illustration, close your eyes and picture an octagon. I think I remember that from math correctly. So picture an octagon, and there's going to be a small opening in this octagon. This is a, a pen, 
So imagine if you want a wooden fence, a chain fence, whatever kind of fence you want. But it's not that tall, an octagon, whatever fence you want. The fence is about knee height, not that tall at all. You can hop over it, but a sheep can't jump over it. And I want you to, wherever corner you're at, pick one place and pick, there's going to be a hole there for a door. So picture a place, wherever your octagon is, for a hole. Now this is the only way in and out. Now if you have that picture of the octagon, of whatever color your fence is, of whatever it looks like, the chain is, the hole is, I want you to think of that gate, of where you're at, what you're looking at, and imagine Jesus sitting in front of that gate. You can open your eyes. At this time in history, when the shepherd was with their sheep at night, there would be no physical gate at times. There would just be the shepherd. The shepherd would sleep at the gate, making sure that the sheep inside were safe. If anyone wandered off, he would be there to stop them. If anyone came in late, he would be there to bring them in. But there would be no door because the shepherd would be there. Now, the reason why the shepherd did this is because as the sheep saw this person at the front of the gate, the only way in and out constantly for their entire lives, they knew that this person was taking care of them. Anyone hopping over the fence, that's not my shepherd. The person at the beginning, at the entrance, that is my shepherd. People would hop in all the time to try stealing sheep, try hurting them, causing chaos. But for those sheep who knew their shepherd, they wouldn't run away. They knew that their shepherd would take care of them. It says, All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I want to tell you a quick story. So there was, put this over here. There was two parents at a pool, public pool, and they're swimming, and this public pool is very full. Let's say it's in the middle of June, July. There's constant kids everywhere. And there's parents on the sidelines, making sure the kids are safe. And there's, a, there's, there's two moms talking. And one of them is continuing on the conversation, and one of them is slowly drifting off. You can see her looking up at the sky, kind of pointing her ear towards a crowd. It's very loud. You see your kids having fun, laughing, splashing, the whistles. And then the mom says, shh, to the other one talking. And she listens. And she's like, no, we're okay. We're fine. We can keep talking. And the mom's like, what, what did you do? She's like, well, I heard my child scream, but it was a happy one, not a bad one. So we're fine. We can continue on. And the mom was so impressed. Like, how did you know that? She's like, well, I know my child. I know their noise. I know their screams. I know their laughter. I know their cries. And that one is a good one, so we're okay. Jesus wants us to be in a constant relationship where he, we know him in that way and he knows us in that way. He already knows us, but it's us accepting that us accepting him coming to us. We cry out all the time, and Jesus hears us. But Jesus is saying, come back to the pen, and I will help you. I want you to be part of it. Let's keep going to the verse, uh, verse 9. Verse 9 says, John 10, verse 9, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the fullest. Some verses may say, have life more abundantly. Now, it doesn't say that life more abundantly is a long life doesn't say abundant life is a comfortable life. What it's saying is abundant life is a life with Jesus. I feel like often we put these, these guards around us, and while we should feel safe and protected, things are still going to happen. People are still competing for our love and our attention, but Jesus is saying, I'm still going to be here. Jesus is saying, when you spend time with me, you'll recognize my voice. Jesus is saying, if you follow me, you'll be safe. You'll be okay.
we have a shepherd who has a place for us and who calls us by name. But the good news about the good news is that it's for everyone. It's for me. It's for you. It's also for your neighbor. Jesus knows him by name too. He knows them by name. The boss who let you go, Jesus knows them by name. The person who hurt you so long ago that you haven't forgave yet, Jesus knows them by name too. Your family member, your friends, your coworkers, Jesus knows them by name, just as he knows you. Now, the whole point is once we're accepting this, once we know his voice, once we're into the fold, lastly is to share the pasture. However big your octagon was, your pen was when you're imagining it, I want you to be 10 times bigger, 100 times bigger. That's what Jesus wants. He wants this pen to be full. I was reading, as I, as I was studying this, I came across a story where, or a picture of Jesus where he's sitting at the gate with his sheep. And he sees the ones walking around, and he's like, please come in. And they gladly walk in. Even those who are outside, he still wants them to come in. There is no division. You may think, oh, this person doesn't belong here. But earlier, like I said, Jesus paid the price for you. He paid the price for them as well. They are worth the same thing. And it's up to us to tell them that, for us to accept that. that our, the price that Jesus paid for us the same price he paid for that person. And he wants them in our fold. I want you to repeat after me and say, he knows my name. And he wants me. No, I don't know about you, but after this three weeks of camp, I'm feeling a little bit homesick. There's a father who wants me. He wants me home. The love that he, he has for me is unconditional. It's crazy to think about, to sit down and ponder that Jesus came down and said, I love you so much, I'm going to give my life just for a chance for you to come to me, for a chance. Just for a chance for the person you, you walk with this, to the store, your neighbors, just for a chance that you would come to me. It's worth it. You are worth that price. No matter what anyone else says to you throughout this week, throughout your entire life, you can smile and say, I know my worth. I know my shepherd. And I know he will take care of me. So our third point today is share the pasture. Now this message is really short and sweet, but something we can continue on learning throughout our entire lives. I feel like this is the, I, I picked this because I feel like it's so simple, it's hard to grasp. It's so crazy to accept this love that we kind of push it off. We kind of say, Jesus, thank you so much for loving us, but maybe I'll pass it on to someone else. But Jesus is saying, no, there's enough love. There's enough room in this pen for everyone, even you. And if maybe if you haven't accepted that yet, maybe if you haven't gotten to that point where you, can't, you can share the pasture, I want you today to think about that. Think about your worth. There was a price already paid for you. I'm going to keep repeating that. There's been a price already paid for you, and that is your worth. That is who you are. Jesus wants you in the fold. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for this day. Lord, thank you for reminding us of who we are and whose we are, Lord. Lord, today we've pictured this, this pasture in our heads, this pen, Lord. And I really hope that in our minds we are picturing it from the inside. Lord, I ask that you remind us daily that we belong inside the pasture, Lord. That if we follow you, we'll be safe. Lord, we might wander off. We may not be the smartest. We may have some hiccups along the road, Lord. But remind us to continue following you. And Lord, let us share 
this love so much that people recognize it. People see something different in us throughout the week, throughout their lives. They say, Who, whose love do you have? What's, what's going on in your life? And Lord, we can share, I am bought with the price and so are you. Whoever we meet, Lord, let us be able to share this love with others. Thank you for being the door and protecting us, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.